Now this was actually on my list last year. But with the passing of our beloved Zenobia, it wasn't to be. I'm happy to have it on my list this year because it's another reason that horror can be great without strong language and blood and guts. Today's movie, Coraline. Coraline and her mother and father have just moved, and she's unhappy with her new surroundings. Her parents have their own issues that take precedence, so it's stay out of the way, don't be a pest. The outside, nothing to write home about. The neighbors are quirky. Caroline, but I see babe. No! <laughs> you are in terrible danger. Oh, give me that cup, April. Indoors, while she's having a good look around the rooms, something catches her eye. She finds a door that has been wallpapered over. Will you stop pestering me if I do this for you? Fine. The opening and the journey through turns boredom into wonder as she enters a mirror world where everything she could ever want is catered to. But at a price, the wonder becomes caution and then terror. Now I love stop motion animation. I grew up on Jason and the Argonauts, Sinbad and Clash of the Thighpads. And then when I was a teenager, Wallace and Gromit. The past 20 years has proved it has not gone out of fashion. With Coraline, Paranorman, the Box Trolls, it holds the spark of old with a 21st century touch. Neil Gaiman's work is an absolute delight. When I was growing up, there were plenty of movies that had horror themes. Hocus Pocus, Little Shop of Horrors, Casper, Poltergeist, Ghostbusters, Gremlins. Coraline is a beautifully crafted movie that takes me right back to my childhood. They say even the proudest spirit can be broken with love. <laughs> 